Hello artist! Welcome back. We are going to be working on our optical illusion that we started last class. If you don't have it, you need to go back to the Google Classroom and complete App Art 1 and come back and join us when you are done. Optical illusions are images that trick your brain. They make you see things that aren't actually there. They're using lines, they're using value to create this um, feeling that things are moving when they really aren't. One thing that we need to be careful with and be aware of is that good craftsmanship is going to make a successful illusion. So if you are coloring or drawing sloppily, um, messy, you're scribbling, um, lots of eraser marks, these things are going to affect your final project. So you need to be very precise when you are coloring, focused. You need to make sure that you're you know, paying attention to detail and that you're um, working your best to produce the best product. If you are scribbling and rushing, your project is just not going to have that illusion that some of your classmates may have. So take your time and do a good job coloring. So today we're going to be coloring and the only thing we're going to be working with today is our red colored pencil. So I have some colored pencil tips for you that we're going to be talking about. I think it's really important that we um, use these colored pencils correctly. Um, I can't provide you with extra paper if you make a mistake and need to start over. So let me tell you um, about some color pen coloring tips when you're using colored pencils. All right, so let me show you some color pencil tips. The first thing we want to be careful of is that you don't press too hard. I see students who go in and they are pressing so hard that their colored pencil becomes shiny and um, they get exhausted because pressing that hard is a lot of work on your hands. So you need to be um, coloring lighter um, when you are coloring. We, this way we can add lots of layers of color to our project and there's a huge difference between the color here and the color here. This is pressing way too hard. This is no good. All right, do not press that hard. And this is the correct pressure that we want to see. I can make it darker by doing a couple additional layers of coloring on there, but that's the effect that we are hoping to see. And make sure you're following the shape or the line. So right here, there is a curve. So when I'm coloring, I should be coloring in curves. If there's a straight line here, I can color in a straight line here. That helps me stay inside my lines as well when I color in the direction. I shouldn't be coloring outside my lines or when I get to the edges doing something like this and scribbling outside my lines. If I color inside, if I follow the line or the shape that I'm coloring inside of, you'll be more successful when you color. So what we're going to be coloring today is the product that we started last time. We're going to be making this into an American flag. So what we need to do is we're going to start coloring um, on this side of our paper and we want to um, start coloring these stripes first. All right, follow along with me. You wanna color in the same order that I am coloring in. Um, if you don't, you won't end up with the checkerboard pattern that we are aiming for. If you just start coloring in random um, squares, your stripes will be thrown off and the illusion will be ruined. Once again, going back to that craftsmanship, um, working on the quality of our project and following the guidelines. So we're going to skip this stripe right here of our flag and we are going to work on this one right here and color that one in. I am going to color along with you guys, but I am going to eventually speed up my coloring. And we're coloring lightly because I want you guys to see me color all of them in. So I'm gonna do this along with you for the first one. You should have two that you need to color in here. Once again, I'm following the shape. I'm coloring lightly. This is not our final layer of color. We're just getting some color into each square. We're not, or each stripe, we're not scribbling. Filling in all the white spots without pressing hard. So the color's even, there's no white spaces. Then I'm going to color in this little guy down here. 
skipping one. It almost looks like, like a candy cane, sort of. All right. So my first column, all right, is done. Huge white spot, little white spot, then red, white, red. Now we want to repeat it on this side. And we want the to do the opposite. So we want it to look like a checkerboard. So if red is right here, then this spot needs to stay white. If white is right here, then the one next to it is going to be red. Following your shape, nice and even, it's not a race. In the past, we've done this with markers, but I think these colored pencils are going to look fantastic. All right. And now, since I got white, red, white, and now I'm going to do this one red, you have to go in an order, otherwise you will end up with not a checkerboard. Turn your paper as you need to. You see mine turn in all kinds of directions. Makes it easier to color. Also notice how and where I am holding my colored pencil. I'm holding it up quite a bit from the end. This allows me to draw lighter. If I was holding it near the bottom of the pencil, I would be pressing harder because there's more pressure down there. This, this loosens up the um, amount of pressure I'm putting on the pencil lead, which allows me to color lighter. Also, when you're coloring this lightly on your paper, there's a good chance that you'll be able to erase it if you do make a mistake. If I was pressing super hard, then, there's a, then you wouldn't be able to erase it. All right, so that stripe is done. This is going to be white. And the last one right here the, in my column is going to be red. So I go along the side, up and down because it's a vertical line there. Up and down, vertical line here. And then a curve. All right. Now these are done and I'm gonna hop over to this column and do the same thing. White here, red needs to go here and I'm gonna do every other one. I am going to fast forward this part and repeat the flag and finish it.
All right, friends, I finished coloring my project in. I have um, a checkerboard pattern, which means every other shape is red. When I look across, white, red, white, red, white. And then also when I go up, down, white, red, white, red, white, red, white. Ch check yourself and make sure that it is a checkerboard pattern. If it's not, see if you can erase it and fix it. And if it, um, you can't erase and fix it, flip it over and do it again. This is going to um, ensure that you have a lot of success on this project. All right. So next we're going to add a little bit of value to our project. We're just going to make the sides of our project just a touch darker um, so it looks like um, this these these lines here are folds and that our project um, is waving in the air so what we're going to do is we're going to darken up just a little bit with our pencil near the fold so these are diagonal lines that I'm making. All right, these diagonal lines are going on this one. And these are just getting darkened up just a little bit. All right, we can already see the effect that that's having. And then these, this one are gonna go down These should be diagonal. Do not make these too dark, otherwise it's gonna look like stripes on there. We just want one extra layer of of color on there, helping it look a little more like it's bending. This is a great way to make things look three-dimensional. It's really gonna help the illusion. So these are all diagonal lines that I'm coloring in here. And they're about a finger width thick as well, if you're wondering how thick to go. So this should make the centers of our columns a little bit lighter. All right, and now we're starting to get that waving effect. It's a super simple trick to make an illusion. Once again, you're still staying inside your shapes. You're not scribbling. Make sure you do both sides of every red shape. All right, so I need to do this one. So you can see the difference between um, this side that has it and this side that doesn't. And it really is a great way to make like a gradient or like an ombre effect. We're gonna get quite a bit of practice with this this year. We're gonna do a few projects with this shading and making things a little bit darker. All right, last one. All right, so now I've added an extra layer of value. You can see that I'm starting to get that wavy, bendy effect now. It looks like this is down low and then it goes whoop up high, really starting to get that wave happening with our project. So it is time to clean up. Make sure you take care of your materials. They are your responsibility. I cannot replace all these materials in your bag. I, we simply cannot do that this year. So you need to make sure that these are all going away, put being put away and not being used for anything except art class on your art day. 
I do want you to take a picture of your progress so I can see what you did and make sure it is successful and that you understood what was being asked of you. And if you have any um, problems or issues, I can we can fix those before we get started with our final step next class. Can't wait to see how you did. See you next week.